One of the most commonly used phrases across Major League Baseball early in the season is that it's a small sample size. Well, I've got 10 guys who've had very interesting starts this season, very surprising analytic starts. And you know around here on 3-Up, 3-Down, we love to take a look at all types of players. So let's check out 10 guys who've had explosive starts and see if they're going to continue down this path, whether it be successful or whether they're going to be beaten up. Let's go. We're going to kick things off with rookie Jung Hoo Lee, the Korean outfielder from the San Francisco Giants. When Lee was signed, it was very much thought that he was going to be a solid contact hitter with a lot of speed. What we didn't know is the fact that Jung Hoo Lee has some nice pop. He leads Major League Baseball in the percentage of swings that create an exit velocity of 95 miles per hour or higher. In fact, he leads baseball with 26 balls in play, 95 miles an hour or higher in terms of exit velocity. And he has shown some very nice pop. This is not what we expected from Jung Hoo Lee. We expected kind of a slap hitter, kind of an Ichiro throwback with some speed, some solid defense in center field. But what we're finding out is that Lee can really swing the bat. And it's going to be very interesting if he can continue this kind of pop and continue to barrel up the baseball. And I really hope he does. I think he's a very fun player for the Giants. And I'm waiting to see more from Jung Hoo Lee. Next up is a star pitcher that after a year away from the game, you didn't know what you were going to get. And that's Mets closer Edwin Diaz. Yes, before Diaz was absolutely lights out with that predominant trumpets entrance. And this year he has picked up right where he left off. Yes, it wasn't an arm injury that kept him out. It was a leg injury. But Diaz has been absolutely phenomenal to start the season. A 78.7 average exit velocity against him. That is one of the tops in baseball. And he has yet to give up a barrel in baseball this year. Yes, it's a small sample. Yes, it's early in the season. Yes, he's a closer throwing only one inning. But Edwin Diaz is doing what the Mets have paid him to do. And I'm really excited to have one of the best closers back in Major League Baseball with the best entrance in the game today. Up next is a player with the Pittsburgh Pirates that I was very high on a lot of when he was moved over to the Pirates from the Royals in the offseason. And that's outfielder Edward Olivares. And Olivares is absolutely thriving in Pittsburgh. He has a batting average above 300, which is very good in today's game. But you think there's going to be some regression. Unfortunately, the metrics don't actually suggest that in terms of expected weighted on base average, in terms of expected slugging, expected batting average, barrel rate, sweet spot rate, Edward Olivares is in the 95th percentile or higher in every single stat. And what that suggests is the fact that his start isn't a fluke. In fact, his expected batting average is higher than his batting average. His expected slug is higher than his slugging percentage. What that tells you is that Oliveras has actually been unlucky. He's been phenomenal for the Pirates. And yet, he's still been unlucky, so say the metrics. So Edward Olivares is now breaking out as a prime outfielder for the Pirates. Maybe a guy that can be a 30 home run hitter, hit 280, maybe drive in 100 runs for the Pirates if he's playing every day. And with the additions of Michael A. Taylor, joining Brian Reynolds, joining Jack Sawinski, it has produced a very quality outfield for the Pirates, and it's helped lead to their hot start. So Edward Olivares, I'll be looking to see if there's some regression, but the metrics say, he is, in fact, one of the best hitters so far this season in baseball. How about a young reliever in this mix? How about Junior Marte? Yes, you don't know him, but Junior Marte may be the next weapon for the Philadelphia Phillies out of their bullpen. He had a 5 ERA last year. This year, his ERA is checking in at 1.17 early this season. And check out some of these metrics. He is in the 99th percentile in terms of average exit velocity, meaning no one can square this guy up. He's 78th percentile in K rate. He's 81st percentile in barrel rate, which means Junior Marte might not be striking out absolutely everybody, but what he is doing is creating very soft contact. And his two-seam sinker has been very, very effective. His slider is improved. He is a young reliever for the Phillies. He's pitching in bigger and bigger situations. You'll see him more in the 7th and 8th inning. And maybe this is a guy that develops down the line as the closer for the Philadelphia Phillies. Maybe not 
not in 2024, but potentially next season in 25. He's a very effective reliever, sinker slider guy. He's producing all kinds of quality results, and I love to see a young reliever really blossom in the major leagues. How about one of my favorites? King Julian, Edward Julian, second baseman for the Minnesota Twins. And when you take a look at his numbers, they are actually not that great. Hitting around 200, not getting on base as much as everybody expects. However, when you dive deeper into the numbers, this is where you start to see a lot from Edward Julian to like and is going to show a lot of growth this season and the potential is really going to start to display. This is one of those situations where a small sample size is hurting Edward Julian. Julian is in the 99th percentile in terms of barrel rate, which means he's creating extremely hard contact. He's also in the 98th percentile in terms of walk rate. So when you have a hitter who understands the zone and is willing to take his walks and not chase pitches and has the ability to really barrel up the baseball and create very hard contact, that's a player who's going to have a lot of success. His numbers are down at the moment, but you can expect those to continue to climb. He's producing home runs. He's producing walks. This will continue to improve more and more, and I expect to see a phenomenal season from King Julian in Minnesota. There is nothing better than the game of baseball, and if you love baseball as much as I do, then you need to hit that subscribe button so you can follow along with all the content right here on 3 Up, 3 Down. This is a time of year where one or two bad outings can really affect an ERA and really skew the perspective of a pitcher. And in the case of Tampa Bay Rays closer Pete Fairbanks, that is absolutely what is happening. At time recording, Fairbanks has a 9 ERA. But what Tampa Bay Rays fans will tell you, and the organization will really tell you, the Rays are all about the underlying metrics, and Pete Fairbanks is going to be just fine. You look at the metric to see he's in the 98th percentile in terms of average exit velocity and is in the 99th percentile in hard hit percentage, which means he is in fact getting a lot of soft contact. He's really killing the bats and he's producing all kinds of weak contact. Now it's really surprising that Fairbanks is actually in the first percentile in terms of chase rate, which means Fairbanks has got to get himself back in tighter to the strike zone. Guys are not swinging at his off-speed pitches out of the zone, which is really surprising with Fairbanks. He's always produced a lot of swing and miss and gotten a lot of chases with his off-speed stuff, so you can expect to see some improvements there. It's likely that Fairbanks is getting a little wild and further outside the zone, and players have been able to capitalize when he comes back into the zone. A little bit of adjustment here and there, and Pete Fairbanks should be just fine. The metrics say that you still have a hard time squaring this guy up, so expect to see that ERA drop quite quickly for Pete Fairbanks. How about some catcher love? And a player who actually had a decent offensive season last year. And that's catcher Yvonne Herrera for the St. Louis Cardinals. And Herrera, because of a Wilson Contreras hand injury, is getting more opportunities to play. And he's producing incredible results. When you take a look at his baseball savant page, it is lit up in red, which means he's near the top of so many categories. Herrera's expected WOBA, expected slug. And barrel rates are all in the 95th percentile or higher. So he's had a very nice start to the season, just like Edward Olivares. But the metrics actually say he's produced better contact and quality swings than even the results have produced. Once again, his expected batting average, his expected slug are higher than his current numbers. So that shows you that Yvonne Herrera is really barreling up the baseball and is really understanding his swing early on this season. And that's not a huge shock. More playing time and a more consistent swing is going to help improve his game, especially as a catcher. And if Herrera can continue to produce at the catcher position, that's a huge benefit to the Cardinals as well. Because if the Cardinals can have Herrera really swinging the bat well, they can use Wilson Contreras more as a DH and take him away from catching where he's not the best defender. Herrera is a better defender all around, so that would really improve the Cardinals, not only behind the plate, but offensively as well. And how about Tyler O'Neill coming over from the Cardinals to the Boston Red Sox? He is in the 97th percentile in terms of barrel rates and the 93rd percentile in terms of walk rates. So that is a huge improvement for Tyler O'Neill over past seasons. He is seeing the ball better. He is taking more pitches. He is taking his walks. That is something the old Tyler O'Neill, the Cardinals version of Tyler O'Neill, really wasn't doing. And what he's really been effective doing is mashing 
breaking pitches. He has not missed hanging pitches in the zone. He is looking for that pitch. He is driving it when a mistake is made. And that's what baseball hitting is all about. You need to capitalize when pitchers make mistakes, especially in this day and age. And if Tyler O'Neill can continue to hammer the mistakes hanging in the middle of the zone, he is going to absolutely love playing in Fenway and taking advantage of that short porch over the green monster. Lastly, have Houston Astros starter Ronel Blanco, the guy who has produced possibly the best moment so far this season, throwing a no-hitter against the Toronto Blue Jays. And what is so impressive so far about the start of Blanco's season is the fact that the metrics say, yes, he is that good and he's not lucky. Blanco is in the 94th percentile in terms of expected ERA. He's in the 95th percentile for expected batting average. And he's in the 96th percentile in terms of hard hit percentage. Coming into this season, Blanco is very much a fastball slider guy. He has added a changeup that has been an extremely effective weapon and completely baffled Blue Jays hitters throughout his no-hitter. And he did the same in starts against Texas as well. So Blanco is not just a two-pitch starter anymore. He has really shown improvements with that changeup. And that's a huge weapon for him and has really helped him initiate a lot of soft contact, getting a lot of soft outs or strikes strikeouts and that's a big big step forward for Renel Blanco let's see if he can continue to do this moving forward but the metrics say that the way he's pitching is highly effective and has the ability to carry forward through the season make sure you comment down below who you've been really surprised with on your home team this season let's celebrate every player who's had a great start to the season here on three up three down so make sure you comment down below thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of another video here on three up three down I appreciate all all your support. Make sure you go check out some of my previous videos. Apparently I have a hot take about Shohei Otani in a previous video. As well, go check out some of the fun new stuff we've been doing. Fantasy Baseball Draft is back. Out of the Park Baseball 25. Saskatoon Berries. Custom franchises out there as well. So make sure you go check out all of those videos. And until next time, take care everyone.